Welcome back to Wine Wednesday. An Oregon winery specializing in traditional sparkling wines has made a big announcement. Corollary Wines has purchased dozens of acres in the Willamette Valley. They are going to develop Oregon's first property dedicated solely to sparkling wines. A perfect idea. Very cool. So we will say cheers to that this morning. With more on the big news for the wine industry is Dan Deephouse and Jean Feldkamp, founders of Corollary Wines. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Morning. Good morning. Happy to be here. Well, we are so excited to get to talk about this with you. Uh, when you announced this purchase, I thought this is so cool. Sparkling wines are one of the things I think in Oregon wine that is really up and coming, that's going to become a, a really big thing for this industry. Uh, what made you want to really go all in on sparkling? Well, we, we love sparkling wine. Uh, it's delicious. It's fun to open. And um, yeah, we <laughs> Oregon's a great place for it. So tell us about this property. Where is it located? How did you kind of scout out this spot? Yeah, so the property is 57 acres at the top of the Eola Amity Hills. Um, we found it through a vineyard manager that we work with. Uh, she lives nearby and she knew the family that was selling. Um, and so she connected us and just it, it kind of all came together over a period of several months. We're really excited about it. It's really exciting. So this is not currently vineyard, right? You have to develop this whole property. Yeah, it's just stumps today. They, they just cleared all the timber off the property. Oh my gosh, look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. Just up on a hill there overlooking so much of the valley. Oh, the Willamette Valley is beautiful and will be even more beautiful when it's full of grapes. What kinds of sparkling <laughs> wines can we expect from this property? Yeah, so we are planning to plant uh, several of the traditional sparkling varieties. So Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, Pinot Meunier. Um, and over time, maybe we'll do some experiments with some things that aren't so traditional as well. Ooh, very cool. But now, yeah, you do you do make a lot of traditional method sparkling wines. So kind of talk us through that process. Uh, how is that different from some other non-sparkling mm -hmm. varieties of wine? Yeah, so we make only traditional method sparkling wine. It's the same way they make it in Champagne. And basically, you first make wine like you normally do. You ferment the juice, but then you put it in bottle with a little bit of yeast and a little bit of sugar, and that ferments again in the bottle. That's what creates the bubbles. And the yeast starts to break down, adding sugar or adding sweetness and adding uh, brioche flavors into the wine. It's kind of what makes champagne and traditional methods so delicious. Um, so that's a whole process that takes years, uh, which is kind of why the our first wines probably from this vineyard will start to come out in 2030. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is long time, long time coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it has to grow. You have to make it. So, you can't you can't rush something. Yeah, good things take time. You can't rush it. Yes, we know that the Willamette Valley is a great place to make wine, but why? Well, um, one of the biggest reasons is that the Willamette Valley has a geographic feature called the Van Duzer Corridor, which is basically a split in the coast range, and that's where cold air can kind of come into the valley every night, keeps things cool at night. Um, that's really important for helping grapes hold on to their acidity, which is important for all wine, but especially for sparkling. And we're our new site is right in the path of those winds coming in through the Van Duzer corridor. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that is that is so good for the grapes to to help keep them cool. Let that process really happen over the whole so growing scientific. season. Yeah, there's there's just there's so many different intricacies that can go into the product, which I think is just one of the things that makes it so fun. Uh, now you mentioned, okay, so we're we're gonna wait till probably 2030 for some of the wines from this new property, but it's it's tasting season right now and you do have some fantastic wines that people can try. So how can people find your wines? Yeah, so we have currently a temporary tasting space on the grounds of Winters Hill uh, Estate, which is up in the Dundee Hills. Uh, you can see here we have a, a beautiful outdoor space where we do tastings right now. Um, we're doing those through the end of October this year. Fantastic. I love that. The tent is beautiful. You got the nice views, some sparkling wine on a warm summer day. Doesn't get better than that. It certainly does not. Thank you both for joining us this morning and congrats on the big news. We are going to be looking forward to 2030. <laughs> us too. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks guys. You. To book a private tasting or just to browse through their sparkling wines, go to their website, corollarywines.com.